Alaska Airlines now confirming that the plane that lost that door plug mid-flight back in January, it had actually been scheduled to undergo maintenance later that night. We want to get straight to Phil LeBeau, who joins us right now with the details on, uh, it's been the story we've been talking about, but this, this detail changes, I think, the entire narrative. It does, Andrew, and it, and it comes down to the question of should Alaska Airlines have flagged the, uh, airline, the airplane in question earlier for maintenance before the flights? Clearly, hindsight's twenty twenty. You could look back now and say, well, why didn't they bring it in before these flights on uh, January 5th? Here's what's happened and what happened back on January 5th. Remember, there had been a couple of instances where warning lights had gone off uh, within the airplane. Uh, that, along with uh, some concerns about you know, was there a whistling sound in there? According to uh, an attorney uh, representing people who are suing the airline, there had been reports of that. Maintenance was scheduled for the day of the flight, that night, essentially when they came back from the last flight, the flight in question. Alaska's safety chief and the airline say, look, we stand by our decision. There is a protocol that we go through when we say, okay, something needs to come in for maintenance. We felt that we were making the right decision at that time. When you look at the NTSB investigation, remember that the preliminary report, when they looked at the airplane and they looked at the door plug in question, the preliminary report says that, according to the NTSB, bolts were not put into the door plug. And as a result, uh, that contributed, was a primary contributor to the fact that the plane, uh, the d plug door was ripped off in mid-flight. That investigation, by the way, it continues. There's going to be a hearing in August as the NTSB continues to look into this incident. And as you take a look at shares of Alaska, keep in mind that the MAX 9, that uh, the passengers who were, some of the passengers who are on this flight, they are suing Alaska Airlines. And no doubt, if this gets to trial, and often when you have a suit like this involving an incident and an airline or Boeing or Airbus, whoever the manufacturer is, often these never get to trial. But if it does get to trial, you can imagine that the attorneys for the passengers will have a field day with the fact that this was not brought into maintenance before that flight uh, on January 5th. Quickly take a look at shares of uh, Boeing. We've talked about the max production limits and the impact that that's having on airlines. DOJ, FAA, NTSB, they are all investigating Boeing right now. Guys, they've been in the barrel, really, for the last couple of months ever since this incident, uh, and deservedly so, given everything that's happened and the revelations that have come out. But really, in the last two weeks, as more and more revelations have come out, either about this flight or about where things are in the manufacturing uh, of the aircraft, it's been a rough couple of weeks for Boeing, and you have to wonder how much longer this continues here before we start to see things uh, level out a little bit. Phil, can you just make a couple of uh, distinctions and points here? How much of this does it change at all the dynamic around whether this is a Boeing issue or does it become an Alaska Airlines issue if, in fact, they decided not to pursue the maintenance the way perhaps they should have been? Was this part of a regularly scheduled maintenance program? That no, it was missed. not part of regular schedule. Something, right, this was something that they had planned, just to be clear, this was, was I wanted to make the distinction, it wasn't that they were just putting this into maintenance, they actually had there already knew that they flight. thought they were supposed to put it into there, maintenance. So, but that, but remember, there that, were a couple of, uh, the, go ahead. Well, Andrew, there were a couple of incidents where warning lights had gone off. Right. And they, they, they stand by their decision not to have pulled it sooner because from their perspective, they have a protocol where using predictive apps, et cetera, that they say, OK, this is what we think should be done next. And they believe that they made the right decision, that it was not a careless decision. They also made some, you know, remember, they, they pulled it from flying to Hawaii, that it could not fly over long distances of water. They wanted it to be flying the, the route. I think it was going down to, uh, what was it, Portland, uh, to California. But it was yeah. over land. Um, or Portland back to Seattle. Oh, wow. And so they, they made some changes there. Hey, Phil, just to point out, I, I, 100%, I don't want to remove any of the problems with Alaska Air or what potentially happened there. But just a reminder for everybody who hasn't been following us closely, this is a plane that was delivered to Alaska Air two months before. So this was a brand new right. plane. It only had 154 cycles. Right. You know, one cycle for an aircraft, commercial airplane, this. is a takeoff and landing. 
And, it, and, and the, the idea that there were no bolts put in that door, that didn't just contribute to it. That's the reason the door plug blew off sure. to begin with. Absolutely, but it, Becky, yeah. But, but yeah it's this the primary contributing factor, and yes. And Leston knew about that for at least several flights before this well, flight. Okay, well, that's the happen, question, right? the Becky. Be Becky, Becky, first of all, it's easy for us to look back now and say, well, you didn't see that they didn't have, uh, have bolts. Remember, that, that door plug within an aircraft, in the interior, it's not like you can see the, the fuselage from no, no, inside no. the I, plane. I understand that entirely, uh, but they, they, the idea that you just brought up, I had not known before about the whistling that was heard inside. What, yeah, I, the I, idea I, of the, the that's according to attorneys. That yeah, in the uh, New York Times article, the attorneys representing the passengers say that there had been reports of that. That has not been sounds. confirmed so, separate we, from that. We all hear sounds on planes. They, you know, I, I look, oh, all of a sudden it goes, and I look over at Penelope, she looks at me, and it's like the, you know, it's the flaps or something like that. We all, but whistling might get your, if it's not coming from the, the galley, I mean, if the air is getting in or out somewhere, that's like, that's not, uh, no, that, that's, not a, that's not a good sign. Is it, and then I'm, I'm still, I still am obsessed with, when there's a change made at Boeing, Phil. I mean, we moved the headquarters so it was closer to the lake house and the, the shore house, so we need it for the, for the CEO. I mean, maybe it would have been better to have been focusing on some of this stuff, don't you think? Well, that's at the heart of the complaints that are out there regarding Boeing, that they dropped the ball in terms of manufacturing, quality controls, and yesterday they came out and they said that they will be doing their own audit and they're doubling down on their efforts to make sure that they're following manufacturing processes that have been set in place. But clearly when you saw the, uh, the initial audit that was done by the FAA, I mean, what was it, 89 failures uh, or 89 checks, 33 failures out of 89 checks, clearly it shows that they uh, have a long ways to go in terms of manufacturing quality.